Iqbal says, I see that the disbelievers have improved their standard of living and we, the Muslims, have not. I want to know if our religion asks us not to be rich or wealthy. I don't want to be poor and also I don't want to leave the Islamic values. Iqbal, Akhi, you have a problem because it seems that you need to clean the lenses of your glasses. You're not seeing things clearly. When you say that the disbelievers have improved their standard of living while the Muslims have not. Question number one. Hypothetically speaking, that this is true, though it's not. Are you accusing Islam? That Islam is pulling uh, uh, its subjects down and preventing them from excelling, improving, progressing in their uh, standards of living? Definitely not. Is it the disbelievers' religion that tells them to excel? Definitely not. We know of the dark ages and what the church did to Europe and how they prosecuted uh, uh, science and scientists. In Islam, we don't have this thing at all. On the contrary, Islam promotes, encourages, and asks scientists to excel and to uh, progress. Secondly, what disbelievers are you talking about? Go to Burma, go to Nepal, go to India, go to China, go to uh, uh, um, Africa, and look at the disbelievers there. Are you happy with their standards of living? Don't be fooled by only Europe and America in thinking that this is their standard of living. The Arabs, the Muslims, all over the place are also wealthy. They have universities, they're progressing, they're developing, they're trying their level best to restore some of their old glory three or four centuries ago. And they're succeeding, they're doing a good job. So why are you looking only at the poor part of the Muslims. Thirdly, if you look at the seerah, we know how the Arabs were. Once they accepted Islam, once the Prophet والسلام, migrated to Medina, 10 heaven bound were the highest in rank to the Prophet والسلام, and in Islam. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Abu Ubaid, Amr ibn Jarrah, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Urwa ibn Zubair ibn Al-Awwam, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Sa'id ibn Zayd ibn Amr ibn Fayl, Al-Adawi, Al-Qurashi. Ten of them. And if you look at each one of them, you'll find that five, five or six of them were multi-millionaires. So when you talk about Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, he was the millionaire. When you talk about Uthman ibn Affan, no one claim came close to him. When you talk about Abu Bakr, he freed half of the slaves who were Muslims and set them free for the sake of Allah. He gave his money and wealth to the Prophet ﷺ. If you look at Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, if you look at Zubair ibn al-Awwam, who when he died had more than four million in his wealth, and they were the best and the cream of the cream. So they were not poor and never ever the Prophet ﷺ told them not to work or not to make money. On the contrary, he said to Uthman once, Bakhin Bakh, may Uthman do whatever he wants after he donated some wealth to finance the army of Tabuk on the Battle of Tabuk or when he bought the well of Ruma or when he did this, when he did that. So many things he had done, and the Prophet ﷺ gave him a carte, of, carte blanche. Do whatever you want. So your observation, Iqbal Bay, is totally bogus, not true. Islam tells you that the upper hand is better than the lower hand. So when you give, which means that you're wealthy, is better than you when you beg and take. So Islam tells you, yes, work, make money through halal means. Make money and spend it in halal means. Make money, but don't let this be your priority. Your priority is the hereafter. This is your target. This is your uh, objective. But 
if making money would distract you from going to Jannah, to paradise, then you have to balance. Because this is your priority. What use is it if I have my private uh, um, uh, air jet when I don't pray Fajr in the masjid? When I deal in riba, interest, usury, when I cheat, when I uh, uh, bribe, when I lie, what use is my mansion, my cars, my airplane, my bank account? All of this would me be means of torment and punishment for me in my grave and in hellfire. May Allah protect us.